Hey guys, from Sag here, and welcome to a new Crusader Kings 2 series. We are playing as House Mud, which once ruled the Riverlands many, many thousand years ago, um, before we fought this campaign, of course. Obviously, I could go back in the different timelines and go back to the um, King of Rivers and the Hills time period, but I figured starting in a time period where the Muds aren't the kings of everything um, is more, more fun, I think. Plus, if we just started as a King of the Riverlands straight off the bat, we'd probably be... We, the, the series would be over very quickly, because I'm very well ver versed in this game. Uh, the 2,477 hours definitely should prove so. Um, so I know this game very well. And this is the first time I'm recording this on my monitor. Annoyingly, I have to change the resolution to get this game to work, because it just doesn't work. Well, no, it does work, I think. So I tried this a while ago. It does work, but the it makes everything really small. Like, the UI is ridiculously small. I can hardly see what I'm clicking on. It's just ridiculous. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> now, we are continuing on. I'm going to actually load, just so I can show you. I've got two backup saves, just in case the game fucks us in more of them. So, we are starting in the similar, in the f familiar save to that of a, another character. Pearl White Emperor Torin the Great, who currently right now at this timeline is also currently going to war with the ancient city of Quarth, which I'll show off more what's going on there, but currently he's going to war with them and that's the basic gist of what's going on. The remaining MUDs who we did have over over in Wolf's Hold have sadly were killed off due to well, <laughs> due to the fact that I didn't want to be over there and also I made a bit of story for them. I'll show you that later on. But John the White Wolf has taken command of the area. And the last remaining mud relative is currently far, far, far in the north. Currently living in a small little keep in the north road. Uh, not feeling the mad. Lord Bernard of the North Road. He is the last remaining mud ever. So this series is a sort of very much of the early game to survive. <laughs> so that's immediately the idea. I'm recording this on my new motor as I said a minute ago. Um, I had to unfortunately drop down to think HD in my resolution because this wouldn't work up or the again the UI would just be really small and it would not be it's enjoyable at all. So there you go. So without further ado, let's begin. The game rules are the exact same because I can't you can't change the existing game rules on an, in an existing game. It just doesn't work. Uh, but if it did, probably there might be a way. But I assume it would crash my game immediately. So yeah. <laughs> so let's start off. Let's, Get into it. I'll go through a few things as we go in. But yes, we're bringing back CK2 to the channel. As you may remember, some of you may remember the start of this series was very popular. Like the first episode was 6,000 something views, which was double what my Kaz Doom campaign first episode got, which is crazy. <laughs> and it's very shocking, I think. But um, there you go. But obviously there's a lot of people on this channel that love CK2, and if people want it, I'm going to do more of it. Um, yes, I had a bit of a funny sort of... I was a bit... I, when I stopped playing the Crusader King 2 start in the series because I just wanted to enjoy myself. The setting, the sort of scenario I created for myself was... I'm trying to make it so the icons will go... Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I'll show you what I got married to in a minute. But yeah, there you go. I was I was getting bored in this area because everybody hated my guts. Uh, it was just becoming a nightmare. And while it was fun to start off as Emperor and UT, the thing is that everybody hates my guts, and I can't I can't like rule the kingdom of everyone hating me because we'd be overthrown in an instant. And it'd be interesting to see what happened to the AI. Will they also be overthrown, or will the AI sort of manage to keep hold of the empire? So it'd be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, yeah. So very interesting. So, yeah, I was also getting bored of Seeker 2 just at that moment, but I think I feel like a renewed interest to return to it, and that's what I'm going to do. If I get bored of Seeker 2 again, then I will st uh, not play it. <laughs> there, there you go. I'll try and keep this series going, though, because I think the idea of starting off as a smaller count and working our way up to the top is more interesting. Um, whereas, and also, it's staying in Westeros is usually more interesting. There's more going on with the different kings in the area. And sometimes the kings might unite into, into the one big kingdom, and it might be interesting to work your way into that sort of hierarchy. Uh, whereas in the east, there's not a whole lot going on. I'm not massively into the cultures over there. To me, Westeros feels more like home because it's based very much upon medieval England. 
So to me, it feels more home, and I'm I very much love the love Westeros. It's just such a cool place. Um, yes, it's not massively fantasy fantasy based. Like you don't have elves, you don't have dwarfs, you don't have orcs. It's just men fighting men basically, and the intricacies of uh, the medieval world is just fascinating. Um, as uh, as a big uh, war as oh, uh, ah, I can't speak. <laughs> War of the, the War of the Roses is a massive inspiration for Game of Thrones, and it's also a time period in English history which I very much love. So seeing that in Westeros is just amazing. I love it. Um, yeah, so that's why I love Westeros. If we're going to do more Game of Thrones CK2 stuff, it's going to be in Westeros. Um, we'll probably do a bit more CK2 stuff. Uh, maybe we'll do some of the Winter King mod. Uh, you've got the uh, the world mod. That's a big one. Uh, you've got the Lord of the Rings one. You've got the Elder Scrolls one. There's a lot of cool ones out there. Um, of course, at some point we're delving to CK3, but right now CK3 needs a lot of work. It, it's something I'm not entirely into yet. I think CK3 will be a great game, but there's still a lot of stuff in CK2 I haven't done yet. So I kind of just want to continue on with that. Uh, carry on with CK2 until we get to a point where I'm done with the game. Um, which may still be a while because there's still a lot of mods out there that I want to play and there's still a lot of cultures and religions and stuff that we haven't quite delved into yet So let's go on to the backstory of the well actually I'll go for the setting first So as you know we've got poet white emperor Torin the Great who's currently still over in ET um, As some of you may remember his father was killed by Lord Rodwell the Kingmaker who's still currently alive um, His family were butchered and murdered by many different um the lords that took place, Adar and the North um, North Clowns, North Clowns, the Clowns apparently, the North Clowns, which is, we're married to one of his relatives, is, where is, oh no, 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 we're married to his great niece, I think, yes, but Adarin was actually, oh, <laughs> beheaded, he was drowned, what was that, drowned in a vat of wine, okay, <laughs> well that's, uh, I guess a bit of karma I suppose. Uh, we got um, he died of oh no, he died of cancer. Yeah, that's... yeah. Rickon got slowly flayed to death. Was there anyone else that died? No, I don't think so. Oh no, 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 no. Barbary Dustin. Oh no, that was someone else. But yeah, Torin was killed. Oh uh, yeah, decade. Yeah, it's coming back to me now. Uh, so currently on the throne in the north, we have King Fionn the Second, the Mad, who's about to fall to this guy. Who is a Northern Stark in a way, but he's a different house, so he's going to lose control. And the Boltons are sort of going to take control as well. Unless Inigan takes up the Stark dynasty, because he's a foreign religion, I don't think he will. Um, so there's that. And also the Bolton guy is still alive because he has the immortal, immortal trait. God knows how he got that, but there you go. But as you can see, the Bolton line isn't quite doing too well. Well, I don't know, but we'll see. Uh, over in the Vale, we have King Janus, uh, King Queen Janus of Mountain Vale, who's betrothed to uh, a relative of a young, bit young for her, really, but there you go. Uh, King Manfred Frey, who's currently in charge, his daughter is the only heir. If we don't have any more kids, it will fall into House Vance, and then the Tully girl, which, oh, his wife. So <laughs> that could be interesting. Uh, over in the Iron Isles, which is currently in the revolt, uh, I'll go through who is on the throne right now, and that is currently King Pervin the Frog, a piper somehow, who managed to conquer it as a claimant, which is just funny. He is now having a revolt against uh, Queen Clarice's claim, a forester, uh, a wildling trying to take over the Iron Isles, which she's also being backed by the Harlors, which is interesting. It is Harlor, isn't it, on the throne? Yeah. And you've got King Tom the Third of, of the Rock. He's still around. Uh, you've got the King Garcy VIII of the Reach. The Gardener's still in control. Uh, King Cleodon IV of the Stormlands, Durandons, and Princess Daria the Fowler. And also, as some of you are aware, Aegon the Conqueror is still alive. He's 76. Uh, yeah, the guy's still alive. His sisters have all died of old age, or too much drinking, cancer, and or well, died of a natural death if you're Aurus. At 45, which is a bit pathetic, but there you go. Uh, his heir, who was married to one of the Stark relatives, died? Yeah, he got murdered by her. Who got blinded, but I don't think that was him or someone else. Well, the Aegon is next in line to the throne. 
So that could be precarious if Aegon dies quite now, if like immediately. A nine-year-old um, nine-year-old boy won't be able to hold New Valir, I don't think. And you've got other sons and stuff that are still around as well. Uh, Prince Rhaegar, his uh, the um, nephew of the next in line, who could take the throne as he does have a dragon. But then again, I'm pretty sure no, he doesn't actually. But Aegon is actually married to uh, the eventual heir to the throne of. How is that going to work? Yeah, so she might be... So Aegon may end up inheriting the Yeeti Empire, <laughs> which could be hilarious. Um, so that could be funny. But they're still allied, so we'll see how that, well that goes. I can't remember if Bravos has gone broken free or is now their own thing. I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on there. We'll find out, I suppose. Uh, but then we got the Night's Watch above us with Commander Garmund Goldstand. Then we got the Wildlings fighting and doing their shit. It'd be interesting because we're so far north to see what goes on up here as well. Uh, so on to Lord Bernard of the North Road. Um, where do we begin? <laughs> so as you may remember, John and Christopher Mudd came to the came came with Brandon the Wise to Wolf's Point. I'll go over there actually to show you. They came to Wolf's Point. Uh, he married the Boa woman that also came over, who then married the uh, who was that? A uh, hedge knight guy, uh, John Mudd. Married a Dustin, and then he died of gonorrhea, and he died of complications. Complications uh, related to gout. It's a bit pathetic, really. <laughs> you think these famous people would live a bit longer? I'm gonna shut my curtains because it's really because it's gonna get. I knocked something over. I did. That doesn't matter. It's fine. <laughs> so on to the mud. So John had a lower mud. Uh, who then married Wireless. Um, but she did have a bit of a relationship with someone before. Which we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, Cleos Mudd, who was given land, given the High Lordship of Wolf's Hold. And was married to Alice Stark, who's now currently widowed. Uh, maybe she should live with us, really. But she was more close with the king. And she's a Stark, so she is the brother of king of the Emperor. So she'd probably say that. So, during the whole sort of war that took place... What what you didn't see in the background is that um, during the whole war, oh no 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 yeah no yes 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 yes. So during that whole war and conquest thing, uh, Boo Fai, who had taken the taken this place earlier, had taken uh, captured Wolves Hold. They captured a lot of settlements, as you may remember. Uh, well, as you know, you wouldn't have seen that, but technically some of this stuff has been added on by myself. So there you go. <laughs> Uh, he actually captured captured Tysane Mud, and he also captured who's that? No idea. Uh, Alera Mud, my my brother, half brother, and had them all executed as a sort of vengeance for. But well, no, this is a war that took place after the Emperor had taken, after Torin had taken the throne. And um, he came back with another war and tried to take out the Star Starks again, but this failed <laughs> miserably. His daughter's now on the throne now, but whether or not she'd be doing anything, I don't know. We shall see. But Bufai went through and killed all those daughters as an act of vengeance after the after the Emperor Torin's butcher of his people before. As you may remember, he butchered the uh, the eunuch emperor and his children, and the the guy did the same to the muds, their children. Even though it wasn't really his fault, but he did it anyway. So. He killed Tyson Mud, and he killed uh, my half brother as well. So, yeah, what are you doing, game? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Why have we closed the game? Brilliant. Okay, whatever. Okay, that's that's, that's wonderful today. Thanks, game. Uh, anyway, so Alera Mud. Uh, so he Alera Mud died. Just died a while ago. So this is well died uh, yesterday apparently. <laughs> But I killed her off just so that when Cleos died, the territory wouldn't go over to Bernard. Because I didn't want to start over here. <laughs> uh, Cleos eventually captured the guy in battle. Uh, where is... He captured the guy in battle. Uh, he In the battle and duel, he cut his hand off, he cut his leg off, cut his nose off. Um, cut his dick off and his eye and cut and eventually with two knives... 
stuck them in his eye and killed him. So pretty horrific death for him, really. But he made him go down very spectacularly. He also, no, he put, stabbed him in the eye. And then eventually a snake uh, that um, Cleos had, he threw a snake at him. Well, Cle uh, <laughs> Bufi fell on the floor. And then the snake came out of nowhere and bit him and just, uh, spewed venom at him and killed him. Um, this He fell into a snake pit, is basically what happened. <laughs> I am making this up, literally, off the top of my head, but that's sort of what happened. <laughs> um, but Cleos, uh, during the current war that's going on now, was actually killed in battle um, by the one of the commanders of the Calf. So Cleos was leading a scouting battle and actually was actually um, cornered by Calf troops and actually had to fight to the death. And sadly did not survive that conflict. Uh, and died. Um, however, Cleos was not really... He, he knew that he wasn't the last of the Muds. Um, but yeah, as, as unfortunately, Bernard was too far away to make contact with the settlement. The, the, the uh, duchies could not go to Bernard. They eventually was returned to his ducks. Why has my curtain just done that? I know what it is. It's a bloody thunderstorm coming. It's the winds making my ship move. I'll move it over slightly. There you go. That should be better. Hopefully the curtain just gets sucked out the out of the um a window because that was suck. But yeah, that's the what's going on with them. And then there's Leramud who was traveling. Uh, obviously she had been with Marit, she had the daughter of John Mud, of course, but she had been traveling a bit and fell in, actually fell in the company of Master Zarus of Kios. He was a bit younger these days. He was <laughs> a lot younger. And obviously these two were in their youth, so this has happened a while ago. Well, exactly in the year 8, around 8018, to be precise. So they'd be a lot younger. Yeah, so she was born... So she'd been like... 20-something? Yeah, 20... 19, 20-something, 20 I think. Yeah, 20. 22. Is that right? Yeah. Around... So she would have been 22. And he would have been... 24. Yes? Yeah. Should be. Okay. <laughs> I think so. But yes, uh, Zarus um, fell in love with her. And eventually, along came along Bernard. Obviously, Bernard had been born out of wedlock, so he was a bastard straight away. Uh, Bernard spent quite a bit of time with his father, uh, learning a lot about the lands of Mir. And obviously, became quite accustomed, not, not directly or personally, but with he became very knowledgeable of the new Valyrian Empire that had been recently created. Well, in the year 7998 to be precise. So by about the time he came along, uh, Bernard had already seen the rise, the, the high rise of the new Valyrian Empire and still seen it to this date. Um, eventually Bernard's mother went east, uh, eventually went back home. They fell out with, um, so Bernard's mother fell out with Zarus and eventually went east. And left her son, which obviously created a bit of bit of a hate feud with um, Bernard. But he didn't remember much of his mother because she left in the early years of his birth anyway. And left uh, Bernard with uh, with his father. Alera went east to join with her uh, cousin. Her cousin who over at Wolf's Hold and spent many years there before she eventually passed away. Uh, she did eventually remarry to Willis and Mary and spent many good years with him. They had a son together a bit late on in their life, really, but sadly he was killed. And it sort of eventually she got depressed and eventually kind of went mad and sadly died. <laughs> uh, so Willis and Mary, who was left with nobody, eventually went west to seek out Bernard. And that's what he eventually did. He expected to find Bernard in the Kios, but he found him much further north than he planned. Eventually, Bernard, after some years and after he sort of when he came of age, started to travel around the, the Empire. He eventually wanted to go westwards, and that's sort of what he did. Um, so he went westwards. Eventually, he fell, fell. He came into contact with the... Well, this was some years later, but we'll get on to that in a minute. But Bernard went westwards, and he eventually found himself in the lands of Westeros, and eventually he tried, because he was, because his mother was a mud, he wanted to follow in her footsteps, and as such took on the dynasty house mud, and the old god religion. 
Uh, he found quite quickly that most of the Faith of the Seven had taken over the lands of the southern Westeros, so he tried to go north to find an old god land. And there he found the north. Eventually, he came into contact with the with the King Fionn the Mad, who obviously was a bit older than him in these days. Or, well, slightly older than him, not massively old. He came into contact with King Fionn the Mad and got on, got on with it, and he got on with him very well. Um, he got on with him so well, and as Fionn the Mad had also been a bastard himself, uh, as you may remember, he had quite a few... I don't know if he had a single... No, he had no... Uh, Brandon had all bastards, and as he became so... Um, got on so well with Bernard, he eventually legitimised Bernard as a legitimate mud. Um, originally, he had been going on with the... He'd been calling himself a mud just because he could, but he never was legitimate. But doing that thing, doing what King Fionn did, he named him a, a legitimate mud, and that's what he did. Um, now, Bernard's not a massive, like, he's not going to be an amazing general, and that's sort of the point. I didn't really want him to be, like, this overpowered general that we've made before. I just wanted him to be a, a decent person, but not over the top. Uh, Flampoint Schema is where he sort of picked it up, lived in Mir. Uh, Train Fighter is also where he picked it up, lived in Mir as well. But as he came north, he adopted the northern culture quite quickly. He is quite selfish. He's far, fairly ruthless, which is what he learned in Mir. Uh, he's also quite brave. And he's also gregarious as well. You meet a lot of people in Mir, so it sort of makes sense, really. Um, uh, that's basically... It's a decent uh, combat skill. He's, he's, very, he's a quite good commander. I'm sort of mumbling my words today. I'm... For those who aren't aware, I've got COVID at the moment, and it's sort of fucking with me lately these days. Um, it's difficult to breathe out of my nostrils, so, you know, that's why I'm pausing. And, yeah, it's not it's not easy, but I'm getting through it. Uh, so, so he spent quite a lot of time in Winterfell, but eventually King Fionn started to go slightly loopy. And Rodwell sort of stuck his oar in a bit more, and uh, Bernard knew something was wrong. Uh, with Rodwell. Rodwell eventually caused issues for Bernard and got Bernard exiled out of court when Bernard sort of went around and tried to try to take care of the of the Stark King. A bit like how Aema tried to get involved with um Theoden, but Theoden was sort of like Grim and Wormtongue stuck himself in too much and that's sort of what happened here uh, with Rodwell. And also Rodwell sort of sort of um got a marriage together with Inigen the son, his son uh, with his daughter, with his granddaughter Lyra Bolton, trying to stick the Boltons on the throne in some way or another. He also controversially married a woman out of love, uh, Makai of Everin, which was also. Um, I'm pretty sure she was given. I'm not too sure, actually. But she was given lands by, the, by him out of love, and that's sort of what happened. Bit of a strange marriage. But Bernard always wonders if Rodwell stuck himself in. He also figured Rodwell was bad news with the whole. The fact that he's 87 hasn't died yet, which obviously in the world of Westeros is unheard of. And the fact that he's outlived many of his sons and daughters. So Bernard naturally isn't particularly fond of the Bolton Man. And he's not particularly fond of the Starks. He, he was fond of Theon for a time, but when he went mad and turned his back on Bernard, but Stark, he sort of went north and went elsewhere. So Bernard is eventually, and this will happen throughout the series, he will eventually take the north. Um, eventually, Bernard eventually went north and found himself in the company of Lord Torrin, who had recently inherited the the High Lordship of the North Clans as the, yes, the original Flint died, <laughs> partly because the Starks hated them and uh, out of illness and stuff like that. Eventually, the they got eventually wiped out. Um, Adar and the Mud... Well, they went down the line of succession, and eventually, they, they and the Hornwoods took over. So now the original family is now landless. So Adara in the Mud, which is my mother-in-law, took over. But eventually, the Flints of the Widow's Watch um, took over. They came north of Nami and took over this area. Uh, obviously, by the time Bernard arrived, this this place had already been uh, well under the control of Lord Torin and his father before him. So, um, obviously, Torin had taken it like 10, nearly 10, 14 years ago. So, he, you know, the new, this new regime had been in control of his place 
for quite some time now. Um, his, his brother currently has the other lordship of that. So, as he eventually mingled with uh, Lord Torren, he got involved so well that when a rebellion broke out between the last lord of Malador, while well, Malador Wall took over Crow's Edge and also took over the North Road as well. Uh, can I show that? Yes, I can. So he had the North Road. Eventually, the North Road was taken off Kyle of North. Eventually, the walls conquered uh, the North Road or the by by um, uh, conquest. And get rid of the Norfolk fam. So the Norfolk fam family have lost this territory for a while. Um, I was going to see if I can invite them to my court. But I think... Oh yes, the Norfolk family seem to be in... Like, miles away. No, I can't really bring them to my court, sadly. But the Norfolk family is kind of dying out. But no, they're, they're not dying out. They're dying... Well, they're not dying out at all. But they're now in the lands of the... Emperor of ET, so we won't be seeing them ever again. So that basically makes like, their claim to this place redundant because they've left it. And also the walls have held it for 40 odd, 40 odd years now, so yeah. So the walls held on to North Road. Eventually they had a rebellion and eventually the Crow's Edge walls lost and died. He was killed in personal combat by a trial by combat, I'm pretty sure. And Torin eventually revoked it. And during this whole sort of civil war um... Uh, Bernard proved himself and actually proved himself in this war and also aided Torin and actually saved Torin's life in battle at one point. He also eventually rose himself to be the master of arms of North Clans and also as a token of respect he was granted the castle of the North Road. And that is where our story sort of begins. Um, eventually he sort of fell out a bit with the Torin uh being the fact that he was a very much very much an old gods worshipper and Torin sort of was a bit iffy with that. Being that his mother was a um a faith of the seven. So he sort of in a way Torin felt as if he felt a sort of a pull towards the faith of the seven, especially as his mother was murdered by his own father. So he's had a bit of a troubled past. So that's why he sort of feels himself as almost that he should be um, that he should be faith to seven as his father got rid of the killed his mother because of it. So yeah. So with that in mind, Bernard sort of fell out of him because he wasn't because he felt as if Torin was an unbeliever, and also because Torin was so high because high in charge with Breakstone Hall, and the North Road was a very pesky castle. And over the years, as Bernard spent time there, he sort of grow he grew to sort of hate the place. Um, so yeah, eventually when Torin went, well, when Torin granted Bernard the land, um, well eventually Bernard actually went to Breakstone Hall and actually robbed Torin blind. Uh, obviously Torin could no, find no evidence of this, so, so he got away with it, uh, completely free. And the North Clans had been, had quite a lot of wealth in Breakstone Hall, and also a lot of, a lot of wealth in the Widow's Watch as well, hence why we have 2,000 gold. Also, that's money. That money is also to keep us afloat because this campaign, if we didn't have like loads of money, we'd be in debt and we'd never be able to do anything. So that's the idea. Uh, so he robbed him, basically. And also with the help of a woman that was about to be put to death, the last of the Flint of the Mountain clans. Yes, literally the last ever living member. Uh, because all the other ones had been killed and murdered and stuff like that. Uh, Beric. Oh, no, there's a separate line here, isn't there? So the Flints of the Mountains have been a bit of traitors, really. Um, eventually there's been some... She, she... I don't know how she became... Oh, was that a matrilineal marriage? Yes, it was. So Arya is still alive. And so uh, when when uh, Bernard went to rob um, Breakstone Hall, because he's selfish, he can, uh, he came across Lady Arya, who was currently in prison, about to be put to death because of her claim to the land. And what he did is he broke her out of prison and Arya, in exchange for his help, um, well, he, in exchange for breaking her out, he offered a, a match to marry her in, in a promise that he'd at some point or try to uh, reclaim her lands. And not, not in his bloodline, well, in his bloodline, um, House Mud would reclaim the Breakstone Halls. 
Uh, yes, the Flint of the Mountain clans would be extinct, but they would live on through the line of House Mud. And also, the Flint of the Mountains is a very old, um, old gods uh, family. So marrying into it made sense for the, it made sense for Bernard's um, character. So he broke out of prison, and Arya helped him uh, go into the ancient breakstone vaults to find the different, um, the different treasures. And that's what they did. And eventually, with a team of, with a team, they eventually went north and fled, um, giving us a pretty shitty reputation with Torin. But who cares? We have two thousand gold. Um, not long after, like Bernard came north. Um, also, many of different Riverland lords and um, people, lots of nobles came north to um, join with this uh, Bernard. Um, they heard of his bloodline, heard that he was a mud, and heard that someday he would bring honor to the kings of a trident one more. And Bernard vowed to them all that he would eventually, once he had taken over the kingdom of the north, he would return to the Riverlands and take it back. Eventually, the goal of this series also is to restore old stones and make that the m big, massive capital of our kingdom. Eventually. <laughs> uh, right now, many of the Riverlords aren't too happy with the rulership. Well, eventually we had the Hoars and the Hoars uh, were taken... Well, the Hoars, I think, are nearly dead. The Hoars were actually a faction that I did ponder should I play as um, but I didn't in the end. But I was going to, but um, I thought I should play as the Muds instead. Um, because I felt the Hoars would be kind of difficult because we're sort of like... Because we don't have any titles or anything. And then I came out of this cool little story of the Muds in the North and that sort of went with that. Uh, but yeah, the Riverlands right now are sort of in a bit of a state. You had the Tullys who were in charge and eventually the Freys took over and inherited it. Um, because the Tullys were all but wiped out. Um... Nearly wiped out. He, he did the interesting smart move, which I praised him for, in the in the actual uh, Stark Dynasty series, and he actually married the last living relative of the Tullys. Uh, so any children they'd have would be of would be of a um, would would also be half Tully. But most of the Riverland lords aren't particularly keen with the phrase on the throne. Uh, so some have come north to try and eventually coax the Muds into coming south, and eventually just taken over so yes yeah, so that um good god is that is that 32 minutes <laughs> it's that 32 minutes holy shit it's over 22 minutes or 32 minutes but either way that's a long time holy shit <laughs> let's actually do something shall we so yeah bernard uh, eventually married Arya, of course uh they haven't fallen in love yet they're sort of their deal is more um i guess What's the words? It's more uh, beneficial that to she Arya wants the the lands back, and if she has to marry someone unhappy, then she wants her family or descendants on the throne or on the Breakstone Hill once again. Um. So her she did have a bit of a past before. She had Sir Lothar Wells, who sadly died, had cancer, flew, and also died, and yeah, died before the events of all that. Her children had also passed away, sadly, through tragic circumstances. Um, one of her children had rabies, um, who eventually died a natural death. Obviously, I killed him off. Uh, one of her sons got uh, wounded, uh, hit his head, went, then eventually went infirm, then went incapable, and eventually died of that. So it got... Aya was under the impression that she was basically cursed. Uh, cursed to not have any kids or a husband. However, Bernard promised that he'd she'd um, try, he'd try and uh, change that. So that's sort of what happened. But eventually Arya was uh, found plotting to, well Arya was kidnapped by the Thorin and trying to uh, try to kill her so that he could, his claim to the North Clans would stay forever. So that, oh that's the wrong thing, that is basically the um, story of this series really, it's quite long. Um, and I hope, but that tends to be the case with Seeker 2 series. I hope you guys have enjoyed the talk nonetheless. And I hope you guys are looking forward to this series. I'm looking forward to it as well. I think this will be quite fun. Uh, first order of business, we've got a priest who's basically doing... What is he doing again? I've forgotten. He's performing charity, basically. Uh, currently, on to... And obviously, I'm, I'm aware people... So a lot of people out there probably don't know much about CK 2 But for those who are unfamiliar, this is our current... Uh, succession law, so 
So any so if women and male ca males can inherit. Uh, because of the medieval times, if you are unfamiliar, in the medieval times, women were very much uh, passed down under. If there was like a male, uh, an eligible more male to rule, then most likely the male would be taken, uh, taken to take the throne rather than the female. You're going to see that with the Dance of the Dragon series coming soon, with House of the Dragon, which looks to be quite fun. Which, in honour of that starting soon, it makes sense to do a CK2 series with the Game of Friends mod. Uh, premature is basically the oldest child of the ruler inherits all titles. You can do like Galvakine where it splits between them or something. The oldest gets the primary title but the other um, children get other titles. Uh, Sonority is like the oldest member of the dynasty. Uh, so the youngest child inherits which is odd. And you get elective monarchy which is what I hate the most because it like puts on random people. It's an easy way to lose control of the land. And you got obligations where you can sort of choose to put up your vassal levy or put up more money and lower your troop levy. Same with the nobles, the burghers, which is basically castles and the church. And then you've got councils, so basically the ruler uh, can choose what to do. And also that sort of just gets rid of the, abolishes the council power, which we can't quite do yet. Uh, but we might do that at some point. Uh, I can't quite remember if, um, did we do it or not? No, we didn't. No, so what we can do, we can actually do the... Uh, what is it? Uh, we can do a, a reformation of the Old God's Faith, but we need to control Winterfell, Barrowtown, uh, Harren Hell, Har Harren Hell, Harren Hall, and Storm's End. Oh, and... Um, Fist of the First Man. So, but I'm pretty sure if we get... So you need at least three. So if we get Winterfell, Barrowtown, and Harren Hall, we should be able to reform the Faith. So we need Winterfell... Was that White Harbour? Was that Wolf's Den? Hang on. Oh, Barrowtown, sorry. So, Barrowtown, uh, which is right there. And Harren Hall down here as well. Which, obviously, in this time period, has, is a massive fortress. So, Harren Hall hasn't been burnt down yet. It's not a ruin. It's not, nothing about, no, nothing's been ruined of this place at all. Because Aegon the Conqueror, um, Conqueror hasn't invaded Westeros. Yes, he's taken a bit of the coast there. But he hasn't conquered Westeros, so he hasn't had to burn down um, Harrenhal. So Harrenhal is fully around. Which is in the hands of... Who was that? Oh, so a random river man has just taken control of it. I think... Yeah, for some reason the... The, the, um, the ruling family let it go for some reason and gave it to this blandish family. I'm sure there's a reason there why they did it, but there you go. Uh, so... Yeah, uh, so we can reform the faith, which is something we'll probably do. Um, societies, I might jump into a society with C. We can do the cold ones, apparently. Um, whether or not we'll do that, I don't know. We'll leave that for now. We might do, do that later down the line. Uh, whether or not we get to the fist of the first man, I don't know. We might do Storm's End, not likely. Depending or not, we conquer Westeros. Which I think I'd like to do a conquer Westeros into one big kingdom. And possibly go to War of New Valyria and stuff like that. I think that'd be really cool. Especially as we don't have dragons. So that'd be really interesting. Um, just do like a massive kingdom of Westeros. Make Old Stones like our capital or something. Or maybe Harrenhal because it's such a massive fortress. Uh, we'll see. Ideally I'd like to upgrade the North Road. I'd also like to upgrade um, Old Stones as well. Maybe Winterfell. But we'll see what, see what goes there. Uh, first order of business is building a refuge. Uh, we'll build a fort as well. Just upgrade the place. Uh, do we go for a city or a temple? I think we should go for a city first. Um, yeah, we'll go for a city first and then we'll build a temple last. Just because I kind of want the North Road to be a really cool place. So we'll build a city. Um, do we keep the North Road as it is? Um, I'll keep... I'll, you know, if I'll let you guys decide. If you have any suggestions for name... Name suggestions for the North Road, let me know, and I might change it. But for now, I'll leave North Road as it is. Um, for some reason, if we don't have any kids, our aunt will inherit. So we kind of need to get some kids going. So straight away, seduction focus. And we will immediately seduce Aya. We also want the sun, preferably. Um, I won't upgrade the holding just yet. We're, we can serve some of our money. Uh, I'm not going to go too crazy. Uh, we want something that gets our tax income up. Not that, because that lowers it by a lot. Oh, that's a lot of money. Uh, 87. 
Uh, castle library, puzzle study. Oh, uh, I guess we go for the puzzle study. Oh, it's the North Fort. Oh, so it always does have its own sort of like name, I guess. Yeah, the North Fort sort of goes with it. Actually, tell you what, I have an idea. Oh no, I can't, oh no, I can't change it because I'm not the Lord of the, not the King of the Era. That's annoying. Um, I can I actually like because the North Fort. Can I change it to? Oh, not really. No, I'll, I'll I could set. To, oh, the Mud Road. That's it. That's it. That's come to me. Um, instead of the North Road, I could change it to the Mud Road because you know we're in the mud. <laughs> So that makes sense. But yeah, if I go back in the dynasty line, you can see that the muds uh, were once the kings of rivers and hills a long time ago. If I go back all the way to King Tristan the First of the Trident. Now the Trident title was not the. We weren't ever the first kings. We were the second kings or the kings, the dynasty to rule. The first dynasty was actually King Lyman Fisher. So the Fishers were once the kings long before the events of uh, the Muds taking over. And they actually ruled from Derry, so which is quite interesting. Eventually their line died out. I can't remember if anyone, like, succeeds them. Oh yeah, no, no. I think the Fishers are still around. Oh yes, they are in House of Cods. So you had Edmund the Trident, who eventually lost it to the Muds somehow. And then you had Lyman Fisher, who was... Oh, killed by the Durans. Oh, okay. Killed by the do uh, those guys. His daughter had... Oh, boy, he had a daughter called Sh uh, Sh uh, Shella Fisher. Who had a daughter, had a bastard daughter called Megan Pike with... Oh, the Cods. So the Cods, technically... So technically, who... Okay, see, so she killed her... What happened there? She killed her son-in-law? No. Oh, okay. That's kind of strange, but okay. Uh, probably for the fact that, um... Wait, what? I'm confused there. Oh, no, so Sheila Fisher had her. But she killed him. Okay. That's strange. So, so the Cods technically have the most right to the throne. Unless they're all dead. <laughs> Which I see, I think they are, yeah. Unless there's a Cadet branch. Oh, no, I think they all died. They all died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they all died. That's surprising. That's weird. They all died. Then the Malisters took over there. But yeah, the Cods are dead. Um, that might be a cool thing to do. Play as like an Ironborn uh, Cod house and then return, take over as like the, uh, take over as them or something. That'd be cool. Well, yeah, they had the Fishers who were the kings before us and he had the Muds. The Muds eventually were over, were killed off. He died in battle, and then eventually Tristan the last was killed by the Andals. Eventually, King Benedict the, Ch the Justman family took over, who were the Faith of the Seven. And then you had the Teagues, and then you had the Durandons, who took over. And then the the Ironborn, who eventually took over. And then eventually they died out and were taken out by the Tullys, and then eventually the Freys took over. Uh, so eventually you want to re re restore the old god sort of faith. Um, if you like, to the Riverlands. And that's what we're going to be doing. Um, ideally, I want to get a general that's so badass, like Tristfer the Hammer of Justice. Let me find him. Hang on. There is. Tristfer the Hammer of Justice. This guy was badass. Like, holy shit. He's a formidable fighter, brilliant commander. It's so cool. Eventually, I'd like to get, like, a Valyrian steel hammer. Or, if you can't do that, we get a Valyrian steel sword. But that's why I, get. I like to ideally get a Valyrian steel hammer and a Valyrian steel sword. The hammer would be the what the king has, and the sword would be what the prince or the next in line would have. Uh, so that's what I want to do. So yeah, this series has the potential to be a long one, and that sounds pretty fun to me. We've got a thieves guild and smugglers ring, so we need to deal with that as well. So we immediately get a castellan. So. Yep, Kyle. Yes, we do have a lot of old gods. Do you know what I should have done? Is actually got um I'll just quickly do that. That does piss people off, but um Yeah, so we do that, that'll make some of the people in my court convert religions. Which is the idea. Uh we get White Willis, who yeah, Willis eventually um found us out, eventually uh, found us in the North Road, or the Mud Road as it's known now. And eventually uh um 
He, uh, he developed a close bond with us. Yes, he wasn't my father, but he became a bit of a father figure for Bernard as he didn't... As he, he left his father quite early on, hasn't seen his father in a very long time. So Willis has sort of just taken up the mantle. Willis told Bernard a lot of stories about his mother and all about the, all about the fabled, fabled land of UT. And uh, that interested um, Bernard quite a lot. Obviously, Bernard, not so much as for Bernard to uh, pack up his things and leave... But um, at some point, Bernard would love to see that one day. Um, but Willis became quite a close friend. And Willis admired Bernard quite a lot because he reminded him, well, would have been what Eamon would have looked like. So they had quite a close bond. Eventually, later down the line, probably once we've established our sort of dynasty a bit more, I might go on the tour to find see the lands of UT. Whether or not the Starks were being in control of that by that time, we don't know. We'll see. Um, it'd be interesting to go there. In the time period where the Starks and GT, that it's been many years since the so a good thirty or so years since the events of the Starks held in it, and the GT Empire, like a new dynasty has taken control, and everything's very different. I think that'd be quite interesting to see it. Um, so yeah, we get along with Wallace, Wallace quite well, so he'd be our Justice Sir, just or Justica, or Justicia, I think it is. Um. I'm driving, what do we want to do here? I guess stay cross. That's the best way to go. Um, we yeah, will take uh, Glendon Bracken. Yeah, there's a lot of different. I'm not going to go through them all, but there's a lot of different um, people from the High Lordship Noble House and stuff like that. So, they they all crop up from time to time. Uh, Aya, we'll name her. Uh, ooh. Yeah, we're over... Actually, no. Um... No, I will go for that. Because I don't want them to collect tax and then get killed or something. Which, no, my luck would happen. Um... Why does he hate me so much? Foreigner. Okay, it's probably not a good idea to get him. Foreigner. Uh... You're not too bad. You are afraid. But you're not bad. I'll take you. And then we need to do a hire a maester, which I can't remember if I did or not. No, we did it now. Uh, we already did a hire a new courtier thing, so I wanted to get a... Um... Yeah, <laughs> that'll do. The peasant blinks and mumbles. Thank you, my lord. <laughs> yeah, I'm not bothered about it. We'll get a singer for the sake of it. Uh, we'll get a maester soon. I've already did the uh, send for a new courtier to get him. So we can get a priest. A uh, designated region makes sense for Wireless to take that role for the time being. Uh, bodyguard, let's have a look. 65, 65, 105 will take you, definitely. Um, 55, 40, 50, uh, no. Yeah, 65 for you. 65 again. 40, 55. Uh, so I guess you, yeah, yeah, we'll go for you. Uh, when you lose a teen teenager trait, you'll become uh, 60, so that's good. And we'll take, was it you? Yeah, you're 50, so we'll take you. Um, that little bit down there is how good they are in battle. Um, I, for example, are 85, so I'm pretty good, which is quite handy. Uh, less chance of us getting ourselves killed. Uh, something I will do is gonna, I'm going to focus more. So, before I tend to reload a lot if we die, or something stupid happens. And uh, this campaign, I'm going to try and avoid not doing it. Um, just because I want to sort of... I want to make this story be a bit realistic. Well, in the, in some sense. Uh, where we, if we die, we die. If we get killed, if we slip in some mud in battle, we die. Um, there you go. <laughs> like, I don't want to be like, oh no, let's reload, because that's silly. No, it's not silly, it's realistic. Because um, in the medieval world, you can die of practically anything. You could die very easily. You could um, have a disease and die. You could fall off something and hit your head and die. Like, it's <laughs> it's awful. Um, now, nowadays, compared to now, um, the other day I f somehow slipped my decking. Right now, it's like really bad. This is just turning such a weird thing. Let's just uh, start something going. Um, we're going to be making more character decisions as well. Uh, Brayson Hill, Terra Tribal Combat. Also, oh, no, we got that anyway. 
But yeah, he's the wall fam is still alive. There's a few of the walls left. Oh, there's actually quite a lot. Okay. Well, never mind. Uh, but yes, the wolves probably don't like us that much because we did take their land. But then again, LR isn't going to grow not grow up with much hatred for us, really. Uh, we'll host a wedding. Uh, did I set my house words? Let's do it. Oh yeah, we need to do this. Oh no, I did do it. So yeah, so our house words is everything returns to mud. Because that's actually what our... Um... Oh no, I did do it. Everything returns to mud. Because that's actually what the... That's what the house words are, are I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, we'll carry on the time thing. But yeah, so it's, it's very... I, I The decking on my decking is currently pretty bad. Um, It's one of the reasons we're moving house. uh, Because the... The decking is so shit. <laughs> it's like uh, it's crumbling underneath you. If you step on the piece of decking for too long, it will crack underneath you and you'll, your foot will go through it. Um, But yeah, the other day I was going down, stepping down to the garden and it, the, the decking went... Drop down. It hasn't didn't crack, but it's sort of like tilted into the into the stair bit. I have like we have like decking stairs, and I I slipped and fell into the garden. Um, and pretty sure I didn't injure myself. Too. I grabbed hold of something. I don't know what it was, but I think it was like the pegs or something. I fell. Um, and I was all right. <laughs> my my leg. I whacked the shit out of my ankle, so that that wasn't great. Um. Yeah, we're not giving up. Refuse. Uh, we're invite our father over. But yeah, if you're wondering how I created all of this, um, I did it mainly through the um, console commands, really. That's basically it. I didn't have to do anything else. Uh, console commands through... Um, I remember I was watching the console commands while I was watching something about The Last of Us Part 1. Which is... Um, they didn't remake if you didn't know. Which it might be fun to bring to the channel one day. But uh, let's focus on things. Yes, if you aren't aware, I brought back the upload schedule. Uh, so it's going to be a seven day a week thing. And that's the idea. I'm hoping to keep up the schedule. That's the idea again. If we don't, we don't. No, like if something happens, well, if something happens like a power cut or something or a family thing takes place. Um, then there you go. Yes, I think we are getting somewhere with the seduction thing. Uh, in my mind, the seduction thing is taking place after the events of the wedding. The wedding feast was... Hello. Oh, <laughs> for a second I screwed someone else. Oh, Medgar's falling in love with someone else. Whoever that is. I am, um... Uh, drinking some lovely Tropicana. Which is wonderful. And by the way, now oh for fuck's sake. No. Well, that failed. <laughs> Hopefully we still have kids. If not, we may have to seek love elsewhere. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fine. Uh, personal site has been built, so we'll have a look at what else we can build. Uh, we can't really build a great work. I think that's only really available in the base game, pretty sure. Uh, the morning after wedding feast has come and all the lords and ladies are finally making their way home. All agree it was a fine celebration and many predict that the newlywed shall be most content. Hopefully. I <laughs> bloody well hope so. <laughs> oh, this is seriously screwed. Um, so the grand feast. Oh, God. Uh, uh, <laughs> this guy doesn't like me very much because I, I stole his money, but um, we paid most of it off now, so we're fine. Um... Sure, let's hope he doesn't whip out the crossbows. It's probably because he just got married. Well, did he get married? Or was that recently? Not sure. But yeah, his current heir right now is uh, Harris. So if he dies, then at least the secret of if we stole his crap is, <laughs> is, is lost with him. Hopefully. But yeah, I'm looking forward to playing Seeker 2 again. I was a little bit funny about it because obviously we had our... Um, we had a little break from it, because I just wasn't enjoying myself at the time. So that's what I did. Oh, I can build a flagship. We're going to spend this money so easily. <laughs> it's going to happen. Um, we'll write a book. Uh, yeah, try and do that. See if we can woo our wife over. We'll build a flagship, because I want a big mud flagship. Even though like we're a petty little house. <laughs> I think we can build... No, we can't build any ships, but I want a flagship. Because 
Uh, Bernard has come from Mir. He's seen the famous flagships of the south. And he wants one too with a mud banner over it. And why the hell not? He can. He's got a load of money so and he's selfish. So he wants to spend as much as he can. Uh, before anyone else. Before he doesn't, in his mind he doesn't want his kids to get it. Uh, oh we can't. We can only do a regular one. Oh okay. That's fine. That's not the end of the world. Oh, what else can we build? We've got that being built. Uh, I like a um, Spulcher, really. Sepulk Sepulcher? Sepulcher. It's a bit of a weird name. Bit of a weird thing, really. Uh, we're with weapon. Ooh, that's a lot of money. Fuck it. I want a bow. Uh, do you want a commission? Yeah, go on. Uh, should it be of my mother? But then again, we didn't really have a high... Our mother left us, like, when we were, like, very early on, so... Yeah. I think Bernard's been around long enough, so he's going to let it speak for me. Uh, the artisans will carve and paint this sculpture you are asking for, or I'm going to say statue. Uh, which of your qualities should it speak of? Um, it will say that I feared nothing. Obviously a bit more than that, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've got ourselves a bow. So that's quite handy. That'll come in handy, I'm sure. And we'll also go get a smith, because I'd like to, if we can, uh, I'd like a new bit of armour, as possible. It was harder than you thought, but you managed to finish the poem. Now all there is left to do is present it. Surely it will impress Arya. Let's do it. Uh, you arrange a perfect opportunity to present the poem in your private quarters. Arya is anxious to hear what is on your mind. You, who am I, cannot leave or even briefly forget that sounds so shit. No, no, we did it. We did it. Okay, we did it. Yay. <laughs> now, please, have sex with me so we can have more kids. Oh. God, this game makes you say some weird things. <laughs> I love it. Uh, <laughs> CK3 has probably got even worse. I haven't played much of CK3 yet. I played a little bit of it. I wasn't too interested in CK3, I'm afraid. But um, I think it might be interesting. Okay, we've got enough money, so we're decent for a while. I'm going to try and get my monthly income up, because right now the income's not entirely high. Which is not good. But yeah, the early part of this series will be quite... Um, probably slightly boring for some people. But I, think I know a lot of people love the early game and early build-up of CK2. It's fun. Um... So yeah, it'd be interesting to see what goes on around the world. Will the Stark Dynasty carries on? Uh, will what will happen to our Leech Lord? Will he die of tragic illness or carry on? Uh, King Man from the Trident still going on. Uh, the Lannisters are still alive. Interesting to see what this happens with this war. Because the Wildlings could suddenly take over the Iron Islands. Would be interesting. It'd be also quite interesting to see what happens with Aegon the Conqueror. Uh, if will he stay as the Conqueror and stay as Will he remain as the Emperor for a while? Will he die quite soon? Uh, we'll have to see that. And also to see what happens with this war here. So they're actually having a war of the... They're doing a Yeeti Slave Raid on Karth, which I set up. Because I thought it would be interesting to see what happens. Um, she's currently on a quest. Okay. Yeah, at some point I'd like to do that and go east. Do a tour. Um, also, I find I need to be higher than... the. Oh no, it seems to be age less than 30. Oh, that's a shame. I don't know why we have to be a certain age, but maybe we're too old for the journey or something. I don't know. Oh, it doesn't matter. We can always we can always say law wise that Bernard travelled east into the into the far reaches and never returned or something like that. <laughs> uh, the statue you commissioned has been finished and raised on the spot you chose for it. You examine the inscription. While he still lived hey, that sounds like I've died. <laughs> While he's... Well, no, I know, because um, this is meant to be... This statue is meant to be here for many years. So, yeah. Uh, while he still lived, Lord Bernard of House Mud, son of Zaris and Alara, had this likeness raised in his own memory. Even his enemies cannot deny the great courage of Bernard. Those who knew him can swear that when faced with danger, he was always without fear. He would leave the tomb content in the knowledge that many centuries from now, when his paint has long since faded, the scholars will be studying his inscriptions in an effort to glean the wisdom of their words. Perfect. Yep, we get a bunch of stuff till uh, two years. That's good. We get a bunch of prestige as well, which is wonderful. Uh, Bernard certainly will probably be the founder or the founder of the new sort of dynasty of um, 
of house mud. Oh, Harris Brackens have become old gods. Perfect. Brilliant. Except his kids haven't quite become that. <laughs> quite that yet, but that's okay. But yes, but we're going to... But Bernard's certainly going to be the founding father of this new sort of branch of the muds. Uh, a new royal branch of the new landless sort of branch of the muds. Because um, we can't really count Cleos because he only held Wolf's Hold for one generation for his lifetime and then sadly was well not his entire lifetime but since he got the title which was uh granted 8049 that's uh, not very long not very long at all no uh i'll see if i can find someone else to marry uh yeah marry you why not a bit of uh, different cultures and stuff to our dynasty or not our dynasty but our court i suppose he is advanced bastard so rather than that we can't really um i'm sad we can't <laughs> convert i won't go around demanding conversion because i feel i feel like that might piss some people off i don't really want to do that uh, but bernard i felt bernard was quite i didn't choose bernard the name but it actually worked quite well i kind of like the name so we'll go for it and we'll keep the hairstyle for the time being i don't want to change my hairstyle too much because otherwise we just it, it just wastes my time. Uh, we don't really need to change our hairstyle. It's fine. And we're also the Master Arms of North Clan. So we're also currently there for the time being. Now we've got a loot. Where have we got that from? Um, Beyond. Did our poet, poet, poet guy die? Maybe? I'm not sure. Oh, I think he died. <laughs> uh, not sure what he died of there, but I'll see if I can find a new one. There you go. Let's see what he looks like. Court Bard Walton. We'll give him a... Uh, we'll give him this. <laughs> a loot back. I could give it to my wife, actually. Oh, no, that's fine. Doesn't matter. We'll probably get a new one when they die of old age again. My master arms, Lennon Bracken, has told me about a remarkable armor smith residing in Brandon's gift, so just to the north of us there. So, Lord Master Benjamin. Interesting. He's not actually. He's not actually a wall. I don't know. How the hell. How has the Mollens got up there? Oh. I'm not really sure. There's someone in the Windhelm, though. Windhelm being our fictitious, fictitious place. Um. It's just that I invite the man to my court to see his work myself. He managed to impress me I could order my own custom made item. Uh, go on then. See if he's any good. I will end the episode off in a second. Here we are. Uh, Galba the Armorsmith. Uh, 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 deceitful, gluttonous, cruel, greedy, slow. Ah. Uh. Once the armorsmith's craftsmanship has been checked by my most knowledgeable attendants to ensure the cloth was sufficient, I received him in the throne room. He introduced himself as Master Galbert and gestured towards his numerous assistants, who all carried examples of his work. Does my lord have anything special in mind? I am in need of protection. Make me a strong and sturdy set of armor. Um, let's go for something decent. What's that? Um, as I see, an excellent choice, my lord. Uh, says Master Galba and calls for the assistant creating three and three of them in his arms. I have three examples of different quality levels here. One must determine what one needs and how much one is willing to pay. However, they will all serve your highness well. I don't always call me highness. I mean lordship will do. Um, the arm will give you plus. Oh, it gives us like plus ten personal combat skill. Go on. No, my luck. I run away with it. <laughs> Hopefully not. Yeah, I'm only gonna. You're welcome. I'm only gonna like accept marriages like if it's already done, unless they ask, "Can I get married?" No, I approve it. If not, I won't bother because our court limit is like above 21, so we're already like, and the court expenses are already too high, so I'm quite happy to let some people die off. <laughs> uh, well, Lady Tarina Overton, did I um? Oh no. Oh, that's not even in my court. We'll do that and I'll stop people doing it. Um, a man claiming to be a lord who disappeared seven years ago has found his way to my castle. He seems to have children of the forest and some... Wait, seven years ago? I wasn't here seven years ago. <laughs> uh, I'd love to hear him saying, go on then. Let's see if we can get our armor kit first and then we'll end the episode. 
But so far, it's been quite fun. Uh, the first episode of the series will be an hour long, which I might regret because it might take a while to upload. But, um... But, uh, it, it, it's the first episode of a series, so I feel as if people deserve a longer episode. Uh, so Glendon Bracken has informed me, informed me that the new flagship of the Mother is complete. Uh, whilst this Roman has only a couple of hundred oars, so Glendon claims it will be the nimblest and fastest in the fleet. For no expense spared on weaponry. The new flagship was launched in the Sea of Mud Road to join the fleet, so probably. So, where's our port? Uh... So I imagine over there or on the east. Okay. There you go. Uh, what do we name it? Alera Mud Road. I guess Mud Road, yeah. Go for that. Uh, we'll go for the Mud Road. Oh, fuck me. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, anyway. So. So the Mud. We'll eventually build ourselves a bigger fleet when. Bigger flagship when the time comes. What's this? I am most sorry, my lord. Galbert said apologetically that Armorsmith is informing that the three precious metals and special tools I uh, need to produce the order I am possible to find in my own realm. Uh, I can send a man on my ex an expedition to acquire said materials that it will be costly. We send him. We could go for it. If it bites me in the arse and we don't get enough money, then so be it. But I'll go time six. Hey, she's pregnant. Yay! Let's hope it's my child. <laughs> this? Um, oh, I'll take the five gold. Vote me in the council if you agree to wives. Oh, you're in the... Are you in the council? You're in Overton. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, it's all part of that. Okay, right, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. What's that about? What is it voting about? I don't know what you... <laughs> Please support me by voting with me in the council. I don't know what... <laughs> I don't know what... I mean, sure, whatever. I'm waiting for the uh, armor, and then we're the episode of there. My wife Aya asked me to buy her some new clothes because of the pregnancy. She has outgrown most of her wardrobe, and now she feels frustrated. Um... Yeah. Again, minute. We're losing quite a fair bit of money, but hopefully, are we still building the? Um... Yeah, that's still being built. So we build something new next episode. Uh, finally, the this has been the, the the armor has been completed. Master Calvert has brought me a sturdy box, which contains the item. My hands are shaking slightly as I open its heavy list. Uh, splint mail armor. Uh, Arthur has been renamed. Okay, nice. Oh, and Galbert, I was going to say was going to stay in my court, but I know he's left. <laughs> That's a shame. Uh, we need another sworn shield. I think one just died. I'm not entirely sure who died, but. That's the thing, I can't keep track of who died. <laughs> oh, no, he's still alive. Oh, hang on. My courtier was burnt in the stake. What the fuck happened there? Oh, dear. Well, that's, uh... He's doing a great job as Lord, High Lord of the area. So the Brackens... So I imagine his son, Glendon, fucking hates him now. So that's... <laughs> brilliant. Uh, let's have a look at this Splint Mail armor. So we got, um... So personal combat skill 10... Uh, morale damage 2.5%. Um, prestige is going up as well. Perfect. So yeah, that makes us a better general. We've got the Mud Road ship as well. Which I will get a bigger one uh, when we probably become King of the North, I'd imagine. Okay, we've got a Weirwood Bow as well. Let's give us Old Gods. Personal combat skill 15 plus. Plus 15, which is really good. So yeah, it's quite handy, that. That will certainly come in handy. Yeah, I had a hor horrible... horrible um, I was concerned that the guy would have run off with my armor or something. That's happened to me before. But anyway, that is all for this series. Well, for today, anyway. Um, I hope you guys have all, are all enjoying this campaign. I am, straight away. Um, I'm looking forward to carrying it on and seeing where, how far this dynasty goes. I think it will be a lot of fun taking over the, taking over the High Lordship of the, of the North Clans, which is going to be difficult because a lot of these regions... Well, if we upgrade this, I'm pretty sure that we'll have a decent force. I don't know what our max is. Yeah, so we actually want the weakest counts in the area. Burley Vale might be the only chance, but we're going to need mercenaries who have any hope in taking these places. Yeah, so it's going to be quite a challenging series, I think. But I think it will be certainly fun. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next part. Farewell.